The protests in Bangladesh have plunged the nation into a state of turmoil, marked by widespread clashes between police forces and university students, resulting in a tragic loss of life and severe injuries. The unrest, sparked by grievances over government job quotas, has escalated into one of the deadliest episodes of violence the country has witnessed in recent years. The protests began with students from Dhaka's Brack University gathering for what they intended to be a peaceful rally. However, tensions quickly escalated when police deployed tear gas and rubber bullets, prompting students to retaliate by throwing tear gas canisters back at the police. The situation deteriorated further as police barricaded students within their campus, preventing critically injured individuals from receiving urgent medical attention. On July 19, the violence reached a peak at Natan Bazaar near Rampura, resembling a war zone with clashes intensifying between protesters hurling bricks and stones and police responding with shotgun fire and aerial support. The scene was chaotic, with fires burning, vehicles vandalized, and barricades strewn across the streets. Hospitals in Dhaka were overwhelmed as scores of young protesters, many with gunshot wounds, flooded emergency rooms, straining medical resources to their limits. Doctors, speaking anonymously, described the harrowing experience of performing numerous surgeries amidst the influx of severely injured patients. The government's response included a nationwide curfew and the deployment of thousands of soldiers to restore order. Amidst the unrest, reports emerged of alleged police brutality and arbitrary arrests, further fueling public outrage. Student leader Nahid Islam recounted being abducted, tortured, and interrogated by individuals claiming to be police, highlighting the widespread fear and intimidation tactics employed. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, facing perhaps her greatest challenge yet, has attributed the violence to political opponents, accusing them of instigating unrest to destabilize her government. The backdrop to these protests includes long-standing political tensions exacerbated by the contentious issue of job quotas, initially intended to benefit descendants of Bangladesh's Liberation War veterans. The Supreme Court's recent decision to significantly reduce these quotas failed to quell the protests, which morphed into broader demands for government accountability and transparency. The government's actions, including a prolonged internet blackout and restrictions on social media platforms, have drawn criticism for stifling communication and restricting access to information. While partial internet services have been restored, concerns remain about the transparency of the government's response and the suppression of dissenting voices. Among the casualties are individuals like Maruf Hossein and Salim Mundal, whose deaths underscore the indiscriminate nature of the violence. Maruf, a recent graduate job hunting in Dhaka, was fatally shot amidst the chaos while attempting to evade the conflict. Salim, a construction worker, perished in a fire that broke out following violent clashes in his neighborhood, highlighting the collateral damage inflicted on innocent bystanders. The emotional toll on families, such as that of Hazib Iqbal, further illustrates the human tragedy unfolding amid the political turmoil. Hazib, described as tangentially involved in the protests, tragically lost his life under circumstances that his family struggles to comprehend, leaving behind grieving loved ones grappling with profound loss. As Bangladesh grapples with the aftermath of these tragic events, questions persist about the future trajectory of the country and the ability of its leaders to navigate the complex political landscape. The protests have not only exposed deep-seated societal divisions, but also tested the resilience of democratic institutions in the face of escalating violence and civil unrest. International observers and human rights advocates continue to monitor the situation closely, urging for a peaceful resolution and respect for fundamental rights amidst the ongoing crisis.